Welcome everybody to this edition of O365A. Uh, today we're going to talk about Teams retention policies and uh, data retention is a really important topic. Um, some organizations have compliance or um, industry regulations which require them to hold on to data for a certain period of time. Other industries and other regulations require that they delete data within a specific period of time. So um, Microsoft Teams does have retention policies and uh, Today we're going to take a look at them and go through a demo and uh, talk about their limitations and, and the functionality. So to kick us off, Habib, why don't you tell us about the different types of Microsoft Teams retention policies? Yeah, thanks, Kurt. So there, there's currently three different types of retention policies for Teams. Um, so there's uh, <clears throat> Teams channel messages, which are um, you know, the the chats or the messages that you you speak with within your channel conversations. And then there's team chats. So that could be any uh, one to one chat, group chat or meeting chat. So all of that is included within the team chat uh, or the team chats uh, setting uh, as a retention. And then the last one is teams private channel messages, which are for the threaded conversations within your private um, channels. The differences is, and Dina will show them uh, shortly, but uh, you can you can have the Teams channel messages and team chat messages in the same retention policy. But if you wanted to have another one specifically for private channels, it has to be a separate private uh, separate retention policy itself. So uh, when you toggle that switch on or off, it'll toggle the other two uh, off. So just something to note uh, when doing that. So I'll uh, pass it over to Dino to uh, just give us a little bit of a walkthrough on this. Yeah, so as Hab mentioned, um, all of this is done in the um, Compliance Center, so compliance.microsoft.com. Um, not sure when that'll be fully rebranded to the Purview Compliance Center, but as you can see, I've logged in, and even though I'm at compliance.microsoft.com, it's now called the Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal. So. Just make sure when you see the docs uh, talk about Purview Compliance Portal, but we're still here at uh, compliance.microsoft.com. Um, you're going to scroll down and go to Data Lifecycle Management and click Microsoft 365. And here you're going to go to Retention Policies. And I'm in a uh, demo tenant right now, so uh, it's finally loads. Uh, you're going to see a few retention policies here, but let's say, for example, um, you're working with an organization or your, your organization wants to delete chat messages after 10 days. Um, assuming we don't have anything like that, I'm just going to create a new, poli new retention policy. If it's something really descriptive like this, um, you know, put that in the description field. And then we're asked if we want to use adaptive or static um policies so really the, the the short of this is adaptive policies can be applied to groups of users departments a specific sharepoint site for example um adaptive is the way to go if you've got a constantly changing group of users that you want to uh, target without having to manage it statically and in the in the compliance admin center and obviously that means static is if you're just going to name some individuals. Um, smaller orgs can probably use static. Um, adaptive makes more sense if you're larger and you've got a more dynamic uh, based environment. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to choose static. Um, you're presented with some defaults right at the bat. Uh, um, there, these four options are always listed by default, which is um, I'm not sure why Microsoft chooses to do that, but we're not concerning ourselves with, with these for now. I just want to focus on Teams chats. And as I have mentioned, we can toggle um, a couple of options here. Um, we also have private mess private channel messages there. Um, we obviously for private channels, because they're a subset, we can only have, uh, it turns off these options if we do that. So you can basically deal with these two policies uh, together or you can have an individual policy, but you can't, private channels needs to be on its own. So in this case, I, again, I want to delete chats after 10 days. Um, I'm going to choose some users. Um, so I can select um, a few users here. Say it's there's a policy for these three users that I want to include. 
I'm going to say next, and then I'm faced with some more options. And I mean, just a bit of explanation around some of these. So if, if your goal is to retain, if you need to retain items for a certain number of time, like so, um, you know, I could set this to say um, retain for custom amount of time and choose 10 days. And you might say, well, how's that? How's that different, Dino, than um, choosing this option saying, you know, delete items after a certain age? Well, it just depends. If the business ask is we need to absolutely hold those items for 10 days, then you want to choose this option that's retaining it. And then they'll expire after that amount. If you're if you're just being asked to delete a message and there's no uh, concern about whether it gets deleted prior to that 10 days, then you could use this option saying delete items older than, you know, I'm going to say 10 days here. So in going this route, um, this this option allows users to delete a message prior to that and it's not stored. So if you're just looking for something, in this case, this asks the company just wants to clean up messages uh, after 10 days. Uh, maybe it's, you know, I think GDPR has a 10 day deletion policy. You would use this. I've used this policy for uh, cleaning up messages older than 10 days, for example. Um, so you have a choice there, in other words. And you can base the deletion on when the item was created or when it was modified. So let's just say, don't really care about when it was modified. I want to base it on once it's created. So we've made that decision. It's 10 days. It's going to ask you to review these um, settings, and it reminds you here saying items older than 10 days will be permanently deleted after you you uh, submit this turn on this policy. So I'm going to go ahead and build it out. And lots of spinning happening in the back end. And uh, then the policy is created and we're done. I would just also just add just double and triple check with your information govern governance uh, policy team. Uh, if you know if this requirement, uh, what this requirement is. Uh, because, you know, we have heard of uh, other organizations that have gone through this and deleted all the chat messages. Uh, so just just make sure that this is something that you truly want to do. And again, for for chat teams messages or teams messages, again, it's for uh, one to one user chats, group chats and meeting chats. So all that would be removed after 10 days. There's no separation between the, the three. It, just uh, one quick question too, because right now we're talking about the retention of messages, channel messages, one-to-one -one messages. Uh, when it comes to uh, files stored in Teams, of course, uh, they're stored in the SharePoint, SharePoint site associated with that team. So hold hold me uh, honest here. We'd have to set up another retention policy for that SharePoint site to get to put retention on on those files, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and then on the shared channel side, it'd be so much nor normal channels. So I know that private channels has its own option, but uh, shared channels doesn't, which is interesting. Yeah, so yeah, you can see the different groups settings here. Um, you know, we could target SharePoint sites, OneDrive accounts, and the groups as well. Yeah. Um, so lots of lots of flexibility and granularity. But yeah, to to Habib's point, you really need to carefully consider exactly what you're doing here. And I really wish these four were not on by default because I see a lot of customers not reluctant to turn them off for some strange reason, or I don't know why they're on like that. Um, seems sort of arbitrary. I don't, you know, why would you leave Teams and Skype out uh, in public folders, you know, things like that, but uh, yeah. Yammer, they're all turned off. But so just really make sure, and, and it's okay to have layering policies. So just don't feel you have to attack everything in one policy. Yeah, and there, there's restrictions, right? You can't even turn on the Teams ones when you have the file ones on for SharePoint and Exchange. So you do have to create multiple policies probably to cover the scenario you're trying to achieve. And that's a good point, Michael, about the share channels too, because it has its own SharePoint site as well, but why doesn't it have its own toggle yet? So hopefully that'll be something that would be coming as well, right? Yeah, and it's the host tone, uh, Host tenant that controls the, the retention. So yeah. whoever created the shared channel uh, gets control of the retention of that. They get the keys. 
Uh, maybe on the the flip side, you you know, we're we're testing ten days. Uh, is there any kind of best practice on how short of a window? Uh, I know that you can go down to twenty four hours in the settings, but uh, maybe talk about some of the experiences that we've seen around short deletes uh, on retention. Well, I, I I'll say this. I know on policy creation, I've had to wait up to let's say 24 to 48 hours before anything actually happened on a 10 day delete. Because I know I've set this up for certain customers and every single one of them has come back to me saying, nothing's happening, it's not working. And then you just wait a magical amount of time and it starts to work. Um, and then it starts to work reliably. I don't know, Habib, if you've had experience with that and maybe you know the reason, but and, and maybe have you, have you tried shorter retention times for 24 hours? Uh, yeah, one day I've, we've, uh, I've had a one day, uh, for a couple of clients. Um, it's worked, um, I would say relatively good. There were some instances where it just wasn't covered. Um, and we just found like the users weren't included in the, the selection. So we ended up having to just readjust our configurations. Um, but it did take some time. So once it got cleared from the user's UI, generally that was about, I think it was about 24 hours, if not just a bit more than that. But then I think after the fact, it takes potentially up to seven days to get removed, like from the substrate that, you know, what everybody else doesn't see, like within the Microsoft system. Yeah, and I think there, there's a lot of complexity on retention applying to teams, right? There is a reliance on some of the exchange infrastructure. So there's like things like the exchange managed folder assistant that, you know, processes, you know, from the, the Azure or Teams Azure data storage to exchange, then apply the policies and syncing back. So there is a time period for that. Um, and, and, and there's some, you know, uh, I think there's a week turnaround for all mailboxes to be processed. So there is some some requirements where you may not see a 24 hour apply within 24 hours. It, just to just to note, I was looking at uh, what Dino walked through there. Um, you can start the retention period based on as Dino chose the when the items were created. I could see some scenarios where, and I don't know what you guys have done with your your clients, but um, might make a little more sense to when the item was modified, which is a, another option. Um, yeah, you have basically when the item was created or modified, so just a note there. And uh, there is an option you can retain the items forever if, if that's your, your wish in the policy. Yeah, that's just one thing to be careful about that is the storage, your storage capacity within that. I know that, you know, there are some limitations, but it's not, I don't know if they're hard limits, but you know there is the, um, you know the however the size of the the mailbox that the user has, and all this compliance data is stored in a separate mailbox, like a compliance mailbox. So it's just something to be uh, uh, careful about from a, from a retention of everything. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how retention plays with the the new backup APIs and the, the vendors that are again their solutions certified for Teams backups. So, you know, being able to you know auto delete data but still have uh, you know a backup copy, maybe be able to restore that. We'll see what happens around that those that backup certification. Mm. But it'll be interesting to see how those kind of play together. Uh, some other things to note is Teams puts data in a lot of different places. Like you think about voicemail for Teams phone, uh, that's stored in exchange. So you may need to create a custom retention policy that only applies to a certain mail object that's for voicemail uh, so that you could retain that for maybe 30 days and then delete that. Or if that deviates from, from whatever your, your architecture is required for, for policies. So that, you know, meetings, recordings, all these different things have uh, maybe different rule sets on what you want to maintain for for retention and what you may or may not want to auto delete. Yeah, it's a good point because I don't believe the transcription is included in the retention policies, so it's part of the um, recording, and the user has to delete it so that the transcription is gone. It's nothing that is automated. Just speaking of e-discovery, um. 
because the question now comes up again if, if you have if somehow you got competing policies one that wants to retain and one that wants to delete earlier than the retaining then content is always it always errs on the side of retaining so if you if you build if you happen to build out two conflicting policies like that it'll always the retaining policy will always override just to be on the safe side so um, that's good to know just in case um, and then you know this also applies to e-discovery so if you have a legal hold on a mailbox that's going to take precedent over anything that you're doing so um, you know, if there's a legal hold turned on for a group of individuals and one of them happens to be in a 10 day delete. You, you know, a copy of that message will always be stored as far as the legal hold is concerned. So you, you will be able to perform that that search. Uh, if required. That's a really good point, Dino, and um, I don't think there's anything in the UI when you configure retention policy that tells you whether it's conflicting with another one, is there? I haven't seen it. Um, in terms of UI, I mean the user, the end user experience. There's there's UI there where the user will be told we've deleted messages. So if you're in the chat, if you were to fire up that same user I set up today in their Teams client, you would see at the top of the chat a little banner message that says we've deleted uh, the messages due to your company's retention policy. So that's another way to you know as soon as they start to see that the same clients that ask it to say it's not working, then finally. C, well, the messages are gone, and then B, they also see that message there. So um, there is some end user experience here. But in terms of the admin uh, function, I, I mean, Habib, have you seen anything? I don't. I think it will allow you to create them because yeah. it, it, it's it's quite possible you might need something like that. It's just you didn't. You know, I guess they can't decipher what you're trying to create, so you have to be careful. And one thing I, I run into all the time with, you know, organizations I'm working with enabling teams is none of this is in the teams admin center, right? And so they may not even know that the purview admin center or the compliance admin center exists. And so, you know, they'll be like, how do we auto delete, you know, uh, messages? And they can't find it in the, the teams admin center. But yeah, all the compliance things are separate from, from where you may be managing teams today. Good stuff. All right. Well, um, a shorter episode, but jam packed full of really useful information uh, from the trenches. So uh, that, that was great. All right. Well, hope that was useful and we'll catch you on the next episode of O365A. Thanks. Okay. Thanks.